What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos, and today we're going to be going over another Gohan deck um, <laughs> that we're trying out for the upcoming celebration or release of Supreme Rivalry. Um, this one, I got to shout out my buddy Nate. Uh, he's part of our play group here in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. You know, one of our local players that goes to Am Gamers Edge. He helped me build the initial list which i've completely changed um but for the most part you know shout out to him for recommending the leader to me i did have intentions of uh choosing one of the two gohan leaders that are blue um and he kind of just like requested the wish leader so you know asking you shall receive like i have no problem revisiting this um wish archetype uh simply because it was one of the major formats that i played in competitively when it came out back in set five uh, when the wish mechanic first came out it did revitalize the game for me uh, and a bunch of other players in my community back then too so you know the wish mechanic and the wish leaders they have a special place in my heart um, so shout out to nate for for bringing this to my attention and hopefully you know as 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 we continue with these meme decks hopefully we can continue to put up decent results with them um, so if you guys don't know what this leader does um, it's sun gohan on the front Basically, most of the wish leaders are the same. So he's a 10k leader on the front. He has an auto. When he attacks, you can look at your life or your deck for a Dragon Ball, add it to your hand, and then shuffle if you know your life and your deck if you look through it. Uh, and you can do that once per turn, and he gets plus 5k. So he's a 15k swing unawakened, which is really good because it helps you pressure early, which is kind of what you need to to keep up with your opponent. You need to um, stave off some type of aggression so you can you know control as much as you can until you flip and then once you have seven dragon balls in the drop area you can wish or awaken to your backside um which he's 15k base and he still has the same auto oh i'm sorry he doesn't have the same auto um as the front side but he has an activate main he has three different activate mains once per turn so activate main once per turn you can draw a card um activate main once per turn you can activate a desire card um, for free with you know without paying its energy cost equal to the the current energy that you have so there's a couple of um, there's a couple of cards in this deck that we can activate um, off of that skill um, at maximum you're going to need two energy to activate them for free uh, with call of justice or you can just have one energy for fount of spirit and then his ultimate skill is you can remove seven dragon balls from the game uh, you restand your leader uh, i'm sorry you don't restand your leader but you your leader gains plus 15k and critical for the turn and you untap three energy so it's really nice because he'll become a 30k um critical swing and you get to restand three of your energy and just kind of push push that way um so he's a pretty aggressive wish leader and he was one of my favorite ones that came out so i, I felt like you know giving him a shot again and revisiting him so as far as the deck is concerned we're playing two dragon radar it's your standard one drop um extra card um it has a couple skills here you can activate it and look at top seven for a desire or a dragon ball one you know up to two add them to your hand and shuffle or you can take a desire or a dragon ball up to two from your drop area and add them back to your hand so it's really good filtering um for getting you know pieces that you need it also allows you to recycle your desires if you need to to make that late game push because recycling call of justice is really nice if you can do it um we're playing six regular free Dragon Balls, basically just free extra card, draw a card, and then we're playing one Super Dragon Ball. I really like Super Dragon Ball. Tapping two sucks for an extra card, but drawing four cards and discarding two and then just seeing cards in, in, in wish decks has always been like the thing. So being able to just dig for, for your pieces is nice. And then your two discard outlets, you kind of want to discard cards you know, that you can utilize from the drop area, which we'll get into. We're playing four Sensu Bean, because if you're playing blue, you always play four Sensu Bean. We're playing four uh, Vegeta Super Combo, the bottom deck draw two. Uh, we're playing one spicy hot boss monster in this SS2 Trunks from set two. Uh, this guy is terrible. He's a six drop, 25K. Um, he can evolve on top of a future Trunks for five energy. Um, but for the lulls, what I want to do with this guy basically is his at his auto is when he attacks. If you have a um, Vegeta or and a Goku in your battle area or your drop area, he gets 
triple strike and then his auto is when you when he's attacked or when he attacks you get to combo with a blue battle card from your drop area so if i ever get to resolve this guy for five energy in a wish deck it's possible just being able to swing for that triple strike for game because i'm going to have some form of vegeta and and goku in the drop area or battle area and then being a triple strike 25k and then comboing with a card in your drop area which is essentially a super combo it's going to make him a 35k um, base off of the auto and then i can shotgun into that and also he does get his auto when he's attacked as well so like if your opponent's trying to kill your 25k beater you can just super combo from the drop area and just draw more cards so i felt like you know why not include him we're playing four dimension magic the negate of choice for blue it's just a really good card uh it's it's essentially it's especially really good with wish decks because if you can maintain a high life total and put five cards in your drop area your, your life now becomes a resource, so you can put yourself manually down to four with Dimension Magic and untap two energy for the negate, you know, future combos or whatever. Uh, we're playing one Call of Justice. This card is pretty good. It's a two drop blue desire that you can tap two energy for it or activate it for free off of your leader skill as long as you have two energy. Basically, what it does is it restands your Gohan. Um, but late game, if you have this late, you can, you know, use his ultimate skill to swing uh, for 30k crit and then tap two to restand him and do it all over again. So it's really nice. Um, I was able to do this a couple times on untap where I was able to resolve a, like one or two call of justice for my kill turn, making my leader essentially a 30k triple attacking critical. And if you throw a Chompa on it or a Kai on it, that's going to be nice. Uh, but it is, you know, it is possible with combination of Sensu Bean and Dragon Radar, just fishing your desire back out of the drop area and restanding re energy with Sensu Bean. You'll be able to activate this a couple times per game. We're playing four Fount of Spirit. I know it's tough to see the four there, but we are playing four Fount of Spirit. This is just a one drop, um, you know, play a Saiyan that's two or less with 15k or less from the drop area. Basically, there's a couple of targets that you want to play in this deck. It's just playing threats out for less energy than they normally cost. But tapping two for a battle card isn't that bad. And then if you're awakened, when you get to activate this card, you get to play it for free. And then we're also playing a secondary finisher in Chilled. He's a one drop 4K, but he has an activate battle. You can tap three energy and he gets plus 5K for each energy you control and triple strike. So if your opponent doesn't really see this guy coming, you can finish the game with a couple of these if you really need to, just making it that triple striker. And the fact that it's an activate battle, you don't have to tap out. You can wait until your opponent decides to negate the attack before you go ahead and commit that energy. Uh, we're playing f uh, four Vegeta Saiyan Elite Youth or, uh, Youth Saiyan Youth um, from Draftbox Six. I like this card a lot. It's a two drop 15k Saiyan, so it it's compatible with Fount of Spirit. But he's really good because, like I said earlier, if you can awaken and maintain a high life total, and your life is now a resource, basically what he does is once per turn when he attacks, you can take a life and restand him, and then you. Um, you get to bounce um, one of your opponent's battle cards back to their hand. So he's not only spot removal, but he gets you um, life to your hand, which is nice. Like you need to have four life in order for your super combo to go off. Uh, but he's also a threat and he can turn sideways a couple times. He's also a fount of spirit target, like I mentioned before. Uh, best blue one drop. That's not um, Sensu Bean, Intersecting Fates. This card's just really good. Tap one energy, look at the top two, add a card to your hand, and then at the end of the turn, un untap the energy that you used. Just a really good card. I think it's blue's best one drop, like or blue blue's best turn one play. So I'm kind of like including this in all of my blue lists um, recently. We're playing three um, Preface of Recovery. I, I just needed a Goku to put in this deck and I couldn't think of a better one to play than Preface. He's a 15K barrier that when you play him for three, he untaps two energy. So he's essentially a one drop. It would have been nice to be able to play him off of Fountain of Spirit, but that's, I think, a little too greedy and asking for too much. Um, nine times out of 10, he's gonna hit the board. You just gotta be careful with counter plays. But for the most part, 15k barrier is a nice stat line. Then we're playing four trunks. Uh, he's a two drop 15k. He's very comparable to everybody's pal Yamcha. Basically, when he attacks, you look at the top three and you add a blue Saiyan from your deck to your hand, then shuffle. So it's a nice fount of spirit target, but it also gets you access to your super combo. It gets you access to your Vegetas. It gets you access to your Trunkses. It gets you access to your Gokus. So whatever piece you might need to just facilitate your strategy, it's really nice to dig with this trunks. Uh, we are playing three Vegetas, obviously three Gokus, three Vegetas, just to go hand in hand with the six drop. He's really nice though. He's a two drop 15K with critical. Um, his um, 
His permanent uh, is basically that if you have a blue Saiyan, he gains critical. And then he has an auto. When he's KO'd, you get to draw a card and add a unison back from your drop area to your hand. You're not That's not going to be applicable in this deck, but he does get to draw you a card if he's KO'd. Then we're playing two of the six drop Gohan and Piccolo from set 10. Basically, this guy's in here just for spot removal. For one blue energy, you can choose two of your opponent's battle cards that... Uh, have attack, you know, cost three or less and bottom deck them. Just a way for you to mitigate, you know, decks that want to go wide with little weenie guys. Uh, there's a lot of decks running around right now that can spam three drops. Uh, it doesn't hit King Pic Piccolo because their drums have barriers, but for the most part, you can get rid of their other cards like Tambourine and Symbol and stuff like that. Uh, so I think it's a really nice option uh, just for some spot removal. And last but not least, one Supreme Kai um, Double Strike from... This one's from... The original printing is from World Martial Arts Tournament, but mine are from Battle Evolution. So, as you can see, we're not playing any unisons, we're not playing any secret rares, we're just playing a whole bunch of 50 bad cards, essentially, and I'm just trying to make it work. I've, I've, the hardest thing about building a new deck every week is always the, the challenge of actually building a new deck. But now, incorporate me trying to make these specific strategies work and using different cards. So I didn't want to go ahead and just slap four baby unisons in here, slap, you know, Golden Avenger. Like, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to play with, you know, stuff that's off the cuff that people haven't seen in a long time because I really do get a kick out of sitting across my opponent and seeing their face light up when they're just like, what are you playing? Like, what is this garbage? Like, what are these bad cards that I haven't seen in years? I, I find that more fun than anything. And again, we're just talking about locals here. Not that the competition in our locals is anything to sneeze at. We have some really good players, but to me, I just go there to have fun and, and chill with the boys and get some content for the channel. So this is the deck that we're going to be playing this weekend. Again, shout out to Nate for helping me come up with the, the original concept, and I did kind of morph it a little bit there, but if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be playing this leader this weekend. Um, we are going to be streaming our locals again live uh, on Saturday, so stay tuned for that. I'll make sure to link everything uh, on Facebook and as well as our Discord, which you guys can join our Facebook group and our Discord. All the links will be in the in the description box down below. Um, also, side note, before we end the video, um, I have um, started up a different project. Um, it's not related to Dragon Ball, but it is related to gaming and streaming on Twitch and stuff like that with one of my friends who... Uh, you guys probably remember Enrique. He used to be uh, a Dragon Ball player on our No Counters, No Combos Pro team as well. And we just decided to, you know, start up our own Twitch, start up another YouTube channel where we just post our content for, for gaming. Uh, it's a lot of Warzone stuff right now on Twitch, but we're starting to dabble in a couple other things. I did recently start a Spider-Man PS5 remaster playthrough on the channel. So if you guys are interested in stuff like that, you know, want to go hand in hand and, and support us, feel free to, to check us out. I will link the channels in the description box down below as well. But with that being said, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and please hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything No Counters, No Combos. We really do appreciate the support and we'll see you guys in the next video. Be there or be squared.